For weeks now, people have not been able to gather for religious services of any kind because of the coronavirus pandemic, and this has made a huge impact on the Islamic community since Ramadan started last month. Yeah, even though the stay-at-home order has been lifted for the state, allowing religious services to open at a 50% capacity, Baltimore County is still not allowing religious gatherings of more than 10 people. WMER 2 News' Aaron McPherson went to two mosques in the county and find out how this has impacted the annual practice. Ramadan is a time for the Muslim community to reflect and pray together. It's a very, very, very communal uh, sort of month. During this time, they abstain from food, water, and intimacy. If you can leave those off, you can sort of control the other aspects of your life. So there's a lot of sort of self-development, self-improvement, um, and a big focus on service. Dr. Edmund Torrey is the president of the Islamic Society of Baltimore. For 30 days, they fast every day from dawn until sunset. Each night, uh, hundreds to thousands get together for breaking the fast, and then later in the evening, there's typically a, uh, a, few, a couple thousand at least for uh, a nightly prayer, and that happens each night in Ramadan. This year, it's a little different because of the coronavirus pandemic. A typically busy mosque now empty. Instead of gathering every night to break their fast, each family goes through a drive through to pick up their meal to make sure they're social distancing. Ramadan started on April 23rd, a few weeks after the governor put a stay at home order in effect, shutting down all religious services. So they've been relying on virtual events. We have programs going on throughout the day, whether it's uh, teachers reading stories to kids or it's uh, exercise videos in the morning or game nights on certain nights. Uh, and then, of course, the, the matters of worship like reading and reciting the Quran. Some things are beyond the human Understand. Imam Earl El Amin from the Muslim Community Cultural Center of Baltimore is doing the same, staying connected through virtual services. <laughs> El Amin says his community has had a stronger spiritual connection this year. They have been able to really uh, reflect, research, and read and study, and uh, really find uh, uh, a good place for themselves. Uh, and that's the, that's the nature of this anyway. It's been an adjustment, but nothing El Amin says their faith can't handle. In the Quran, is, it says that uh, God places no burden on you that you cannot bear. So uh, that for people of faith, I think that transcends uh, Islam, Judaism, Christianity, uh, that uh, we, can, we can bear this out. During this time, it's been especially difficult for certain people in the community. The Muslim Community Cultural Center of Baltimore has been sending meals to their elderly members, and the Islamic Society of Baltimore has been putting together blessing boxes, groceries for anyone in need. Ramadan ends this weekend, so they are going to continue those virtual services, something they plan on doing for a while, even when they are able to reopen. These two leaders tell me they're working with other mosques, synagogues, and churches in the area to figure out how they can safely start services again once they are given the okay. In Baltimore County, Aaron McPherson, WMAR 2 News.